Hello, this is Jared from Commit Quality, and in today's video, we're going to go over how we can execute tests via the command line in Cypress. In previous videos, you would have seen that I've used the uh, npx Cypress open command in the command line to open up the Cypress test runner, allow us to choose what browser to use, and we can see that nice UI interface for um, running and debugging our tests. However, when working in things like CI and CD pipelines, you're going to want to use the command line to execute your tests. And also, you might just want to execute your tests quickly where you don't want to keep opening the Cypress test runner every time. And this is what this video is going to show you. So just for basic setup, all I've done is I have two example files. One, which is this one here, CLI example in example 2 sci.js, where we go into the commit quality demo website. I'll put a link to this in the description. And also I've got a copy and paste of that for the original CLI example file. Let's look at the most basic command we can for Cyprus and that's just executing all of the tests. To execute all the tests we can say node underscore modules forward slash dot bin forward slash Cypress run and what we should see is this executes all of our tests for us in Electron and it should be headless because this is the default that they set when you just run this Cypress run command. So you can see here two specs have been found the version of Cypress the browser we run in on and because it's obviously just going to a web page and not doing anything else. Everything is passed and it was very quick. What you can see is your output for both rooms. You can see the two green ticks here. You've got both pass in, all specs passed, and even when I've executed this without doing anything, straight out of the box, you can see that a video folder is being created titled without test files. So I can click into this and you can see here, if I just play it, that Cypress is loaded, it's running, and here it's gone to the demo website we expected. So that's a really neat functionality straight out of the box with Cypress is the ability just to record these videos. So if something did go wrong, you do have some information coming back to you. Now let's make something fail. So let's just say sci.get and we'll say something random. You can put whatever you want and it's not sci.com, it's sci.get. Let's execute this again. All I'm doing is pressing up on the terminal and hitting enter. And what we should see now is this example 2.site.js is going to fail. So it's from the second. It's going to take some time because it's going to iteratively look for this ID. Of course, that failed. So here what we've got is example 2 sidejs failed. If I scroll up a little bit, we can see here expected to find the element with the ID of this random text, but I never found it. So the error messages are pretty good out of the box as well with Cypress. It's pretty much telling you exactly what it's tried. It's even said that it's timed out after retrying it for four seconds. So that's really good to know as well. So you can look at this and think, oh, wait, that ID doesn't appear for five seconds and change that in your code if you need to. Once again, videos have been generated. So you can see it's six seconds long because it was doing that wait. You can see it's waiting here. You can see the folder got cleaned and these new files have been generated. But also on top of that, if you have a failing test, you may have just noticed inside screenshots, we have this example to sci.js folder. And inside here, we have the failed screenshot pop up, which is showing us exactly where the line it failed on to is on the side.get and it's give us a screenshot of what we are seeing on the page as well. So that's really useful to see. Of course, you can combine this then with using uh, Cypress's test run and start debugging things. But if you were running a whole suite of tests just quickly in command line, you are getting this feedback coming to you and it's pretty well, to be honest, between the screenshot and the, and the video just out of the box, you can almost have a picture of what's going wrong if the assertion message here isn't very good, but in this case, of course, it is. And typically, it normally is quite good. That's the most basic um, command via CLI, is just running everything. But if you said now, okay, I've created, say, this new example file, example two test file, let's, let's just make that pass again. Say this example two sci file is the one you want to run, whether it's all the functionality you want to test for the regression test, or if it's just new functionality. Well, you can do that. If I press up again, so it's node modules bin dot bin dot run. What I can add on to here 
is the spec attribute. And this is saying, tell me what spec you want to run. So I can say Cypress because that's the folder we need to go into. Then it's end to end. And you can see I've already done these once. So it's going to pop up. What we're looking for is example 2.sci.js. Close off the double quotations and I hit enter now. What we should see is only this test is going to execute. So let's hit enter and see what happens. There we are. So we can see one test run and it was the example to, of course, if I was to copy this and paste this in here, both, both of these tests would run and nothing else. And that's because they're all inside this example to side.js file. So let's just do a clear. I'm going to press up again to run the example to side.js file. And here we go. You got CLI example and CLI example two, which have been executed. Both have passed because once again, all we're doing is a side.visit. If we go into the video, you can see here, press play that first one is run and then the second one's run as well. And it's given you both examples here of both the test running and showing both are passed from this Cypress viewer as well. Now, just a neat little tip as well. If you want to run a single test inside your test file, so for example, if I only want to run this example too, the quickest way I like to do it is say dot only here, press up, so I'm going to execute just from this file again. And what we're going to see is only the test marked with the only annotation works. So there we are. You've got example two and only that one has run because we've added the dot only annotation onto this. So let's remove that and save this. So there's a kind of basics of how you can go into kind of different files, run single tests. But what happens then if you don't want to run some, you don't want to run these tests headless. Maybe you want to run them headed for whatever reason. Well, once again, we can do that. So let's stick with saying we're only going to run the tests inside this file. So run these two tests. Uh, we can then add another argument, which would be hyphen hyphen headed. If I hit enter on this, what you're going to see now is we're going to run these two tests headed in Electron. So there we are. This is opened up. And both tests have run and passed and it'll close down the browser and everything else for us. Make the cleanup all done behind the scenes with Cypress. Let's go a step further with this then. Let's say we want to change the browser. So we want it to run in Chrome instead. Well, once again, it's just another argument you can pass. You can see you can start adding as many arguments as you want. So if I say hyphen hyphen uh, browser space Chrome, what this is going to do is run the, these two tests because we've said scope it to this file headed, but in Chrome. And there we are. Inside there, Chrome opened up just to double check that it all worked as expected. You can see here from the test summary is browser is Chrome version 109. And this is kind of the basics of running Cypress tests via the command line. Now there's a bunch more options you can use and I'll put a link into the description because the Cypress documentation is really well put together. If you scroll down a little bit, you can see all the options you can pass through. We've touched on some of them. You can obviously change the configuration options. You can say run your recorded specs in parallel. You can talk about tagging your recorded specs. So a bunch of different things do in it. I'll probably end up covering a lot of these off in future videos as well, but I would highly recommend having a look into this documentation just to kind of get familiar with the different things you can do when running via command line. As always, if you do have any questions or comments, please drop a comment down below. A like and subscribe is appreciated. As always, thank you for watching and have a good day.